Well, good evening and welcome to the Town Hall Get to Know broadcast. We have a wonderful show for you tonight. Once I take this off, you'll actually be able to see me. Hey, how are you tonight? Wonderful. I appreciate everybody that's taking time to come and join us tonight. If you happen to be watching on Facebook or you're watching on YouTube, we do welcome your comments or your thoughts. If, we, if you've got questions for my guests this evening, feel free to put those in the comments. We'll try to get it to as many as we possibly can. And of course, remember to share this video out to your friends and the groups that you belong to on Facebook as well. We certainly appreciate all those viewers that are watching on Amazon Fire as well as Roku. We love you too. And uh, we certainly appreciate our guests this evening. We've got two wonderful guests. I've got Evangelist Norma Chapman with me in the studio tonight. I also have Pastor Doris Smith. Let me just tell you a little bit about them. Evangelist Norma is an author of the book, What Faith Can Do. And she is the host of Facing Your Fears radio talk show. And her co-host is Pastor Doris Smith, who is with us this evening. So we'll be talking about that show. It's a wonderful show. Uh, and it, what I want to tell you about Evangelist Norma is that I've known her for some time. She has a great radio show. We'll be talking about Facing Your Fears and uh, how she is helping people with that show to overcome their fears with respect to uh, domestic abuse. She is a domestic abuse advocate, uh, and she loves supporting others in any way that she can. She helps people to face their fears and overcome the trauma that they experienced in their lives. Pastor Dora Smith, well, she is awesome too. I just love her as well. She's a wife, a caregiver, a mother, a grandmother. She's a teacher. She's also a best-selling author as well. Evangelist Norma has written some books too, so we'll be talking about those. She's a certified professional speaker, Pastor Dora says, and host of the Power Hour. And uh, it's a, about inspiration and motivation on Tuesdays and Thursdays. We'll have a ticker uh, up here shortly, and you can tune into both of these shows. And without further ado, let me go ahead and bring in my guests. Welcome, Evangelist Norma and Pastor Doris Smith. How are you doing this evening? Doing great. Doing great. Wonderful. So glad that you are here with me this evening. So you've been having a good day, I hope. Sir. Yes, indeed. <laughs> as good as we can, I suppose, right? That's right. Awesome. Awesome. Well, I'm so glad that you're here with us this evening. Um, I'm really looking forward to your sharing your wisdom. Tonight's show really is, is about the positive impact that you're making in the community and, you know, what motivates you to do the things that you're doing. And so I think what I'd like to do is to start, uh, we'll start with Evangelist Norma, and you can just tell us a little bit about yourself to familiarize the viewers with you, Evangelist Norma, and then we'll have Pastor Doris just introduce herself right after you're done. How's that sound? That's good. Hi, everyone. Good afternoon to everyone. I pray all is well. Considering everything that's going on around us, my prayer is for everyone that everyone is well on today. I'm Evangelist Norma Chapman, the host of Facing Your Fears Radio Talk Show, as well as the founder of To Be Friends in Christ Ministry. And I'm also the author of the book, What Faith Can Do. It's a pleasure being here on tonight, this afternoon, Stephen. I want to thank you for inviting us on your show on tonight. Oh, you're very welcome. And it's dark outside here, as a matter of fact. <laughs> the sun's going down, as you can see. <laughs> and uh, But you're an hour behind us because you're coming from New Orleans. Correct. I've been there a few times. It's a great town. What a wonderful town. You've been through a whole lot down there, too, but we, we, we will probably touch a little bit about that uh, in, in uh, just a few moments here. But I'd like, Pastor Doris, for you to introduce yourself to the viewers. Good evening, everyone. I'd just like to first start out by saying I am grateful to be a part of the show this evening. Um, I just want to take a moment to share and say a special thank you to Stephen for having us on the show this evening, too. I'll share, as he has said, a few things that 
you know, would motivate or inspire us, but I am Pastor Doris Smith. I am in full-time pastorship. I am also the co-host working along with Evangelist Norma Chapman with Facing Your Fears Radio Talk Show. I am a collaborative author uh, in the book for uh, the number one bestseller with Grateful Every Day. Um, I am also a part of... Um, Greater Works Miracle Ministry as the senior pastor. I have taken on that role for the last three years. I'm personally wearing several different hats, but I must say I am honored to have that opportunity to pour into the world in each one of those ways. You're helping the community just as Evangelist Norma is in so many ways yes. uh, and making a positive impact. Uh, and, and I'm just so glad that you've taken time. I, I am honored that you both took time uh, to join me this evening on the Town Hall Get to Know. It, it's a great program. I want to ask everybody to remember to stay tuned. Don't change the channel or you're going to miss something that's really important, right? Okay, we want to stick with us here. We also want to thank our sponsors, Cool Today. Get the best from Cool Today. And we also want to thank uh, Total Coatings, our other sponsor, uh, the bathtub refinishing company. We certainly appreciate them. Like I said, let's stay with us here. We will be right back in just one moment and uh, we'll hear a word from our sponsors. Well, no sound. How'd you like that? <laughs> Great. It was visual tonight. Okay. visual. No problems. Okay. So let's get started. Uh, this is about how you're making a positive impact. And so we, let's start with you, Evangelist Norma. Um, you know, you've been uh, helping people for a long time. I know that you've Can been you? through a, a pretty traumatic experience when you were younger. Maybe you would like to tell the viewers about that experience because I know that that's what's uh, kind of behind what's motivating you to do the things that you do. Yes, Steve, you have to repeat the question because the sound went off just as okay. you was asked the question. Yes, okay, so I was just saying that uh, I'd like to know what motivates you. I know that you experienced some, some very serious domestic violence trauma back in your uh, life some time back, and I believe that that's part of a big reason why you do what you do. So I'd like you to share about your experience, if you're willing, and then share with the viewers, you know, what advice you'd give to them if they were experiencing domestic violence. Okay, I am a, domestic violence is very passionate to me in my life. Uh, I am a domestic violence survivor. Um, in the year of 1990, I was shot twice in my liver, stabbed an inch from my heart. I lied in a coma for 40 days with six day blood transfusions and seven surgeries. And the Lord blessed me to live and to be able to testify of his miracle, miracles, because it's only through the grace of God that I'm here after going through the uh, tragic uh, that I went through. So uh, that was in 1990 and March of the 30th. And this year, March the 30th, 2021, would be 31 years. And that is a thank you, hallelujah, shout out to God. So from there, it, uh, I was uh, inspired to write the book, What Faith Can Do. So in the book of What Faith Can Do, I share my story with my readers and I tell them about, you know, what happened to me. Now, when I first wrote the book in two, it, it was live, it came live in 2009. When I first wrote the book, I wasn't into um, having talk shows or going, coming from behind the mask publicly with my story, but every church that I went to and every one that I met, I shared my story with them and if someone wanted 
uh, to have a talk show or an interview in reference to what faith can do. Many callers call in and they were asking me questions because at the time there was a Fred for their daughter or their son or their loved one, friends or relative that was involved with domestic violence. So from there, as the years passed and passed, I began to get more involved with domestic violence. After seeing, hearing so much tragic here in the city of New Orleans and around the world where people like myself was involved with domestic violence, some are still living and some was not blessed. They got, they, you know, they, their loved one killed them and they are not, you know, and that's what really touched my heart. And I wanted to reach out and and give some uh, informative information and, and, and educate those on domestic violence, uh, how deadly it is, what signs to look for, and how you can come from under the uh, that type of environment. So uh, that's, uh, Steve, that's actually what started me on the road to facing your fears was, uh, 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 we said facing your fears coming from behind the mask. We find out that domestic violence victims, they're afraid to cry out or for some reason they're threatened by their abuser or and, and some just ashamed to let people know what they're going through. And for, how, for so many years, you know, how many years they have been going through domestic violence. So facing your fears, Radio Talk Show is a show where many of our guests has come on and they have come from behind the mask and they have shared their story just like I'm sharing my story tonight. And from there, we hopefully, we have touched many, many lives and let them know that domestic violence is a serious crime. It's a sick crime. It's, mm -hmm. you know, it's a crime that the partner control, it's, it's a controlling crime. You know, and it, it, it established with them want to be in control of the other, of their partner's life. And in being, being in control is fear there. They have them afraid to, uh, to, to go anywhere or they decide what they should wear or who they should visit. And the children in the household also is going through this uh, trauma and experience as their parents are going through domestic violence. So that's a short in short what, you know, motivated me and my passion for our domestic violence. It, that's so awesome that you've drawn your strength from, from a very traumatic situation to go out there and help others. And I think that that's a big part of this message too, is, is that from, from our most darkest moments, we can draw strength from that, although it might be hard to realize that at the time, but it can be done. Um, and it's just not easy, but you're just paying it forward and paying it back and trying to help others uh, through something that you've experienced yourself. Now, uh, Pastor Doris, um, I'd like you to share, you know, what motivated you to do the things that you're doing? You're, you're a minister, you're uh, a mother, a, a, a grandmother, uh, but you've also got some foundations that you're involved with. Maybe mm -hmm. you can tell what motivated you to do the things that you're doing and tell us about some of the things that, that you're doing in your community. Good evening, everyone, once more and again. Um, I just want to take a moment uh, this evening to share what really motivated me to do the many things that I am doing. And I must say that I am doing so joyfully uh, from the heart and so grateful for the opportunity to be able to share, to be able to reach out and support uh, others um, as I grow and continuously myself. Um, I was inspired as I look back uh, in 2012, I lost my mother in February of 2012. In June of the same year, I lost my father. So before I really had time to even grieve my mother, I had lost my father. 
However, I realize, praise God, that there is no hurt on earth that heaven can heal. But I also realize that in the midst of that, now my siblings and I are realizing that, yes, we live, but yes, death is also going to come as a very real part of our life. I was uh, just inspired spiritually, uh, seeking the Lord and looking to the Lord for strength to move on and to press on in life. I began to seek him and the Lord led me to what is now seven years later and still going on. I'm grateful for the power hour line of prayer. The power hour line of prayer, I was inspired to start that prayer line about seven years ago. And I tell you humbly, God has truly blessed many, many lives on the line. Praying by faith, encouraging them to press, encouraging them don't quit, don't stop, don't give up. It ain't over. It's not finished until God says it's finished. Just a consistency and a hunger and a thirst to, 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 to see others come out of that low place, come out of that place where they feel they need to give up and need to quit and walk away. So this prayer line was inspired to bring my family to comfort my family to help them come back from such a hit in our life in 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 20 uh, 2012 so i am just so humbly grateful and thankful that it didn't stop there the vision enlarged the territory enlarged and it has now been seven years that we have had the power our life inspiration and motivation uh, in addition to that i was blessed to be able to join the evangelist norma chapman in march of 2019 as the co-host of facing your fears radio talk show which is geared to reaching those worldwide and domestic violence. And she has her own story of the fact of the matter of life. In addition to that, I was a, I'm a caretaker. I just flow in so many areas and I just enjoy it. I, I, I was motivated to start and motivated to continue and uh, helping people is my heart. I, I love to see people grow. I love to see them come out of that place where the world say you can't do it uh, and let them know, yes, you can, because there's greatness on the inside of you. There's nothing you can't do. There's a winner in there. And that winner is screaming, saying, I want to come out. I want to impact the world. I want to do it humbly. I want to do it in the richest place, humility. I want to do it authentically, real. Not looking to be lifted up on a pedestal, but looking to lift Jesus up. Because he said, if I be lifted up, I'll do all the drawing. So Steve, I am so excited tonight. I, I've been motivated mainly by a, a tragic situation that turned to a very beautiful, helpful situation to be able to touch the lives of so many people. Well, I'm so glad that you are here. I love, I love listening to you. You're so awesome. And I just want to remind the viewers to tune in uh, the Facing Your Fears a radio show with a uh, host evangelist Norma Chapman as well as co-host uh, Pastor Doris Smith is tomorrow at 4.30. And uh, let me just get this ticker back up here for you. You can dial in uh, and listen, but you can also participate too as well. And perhaps if you have questions of uh, Pastor Doris or evangelist Norma tonight, put them in the comments. We'll try and address those as well. Uh, but let me just get this going here. So you can call in, you can listen, but you can also press one and then that'll bring you into the queue so that if you have a question or comment that you can uh, be addressed with that tomorrow. Maybe Evangelist Norma, you'll tell us about your show tomorrow. You've got a good one coming. Tomorrow, my special guest will be uh, Reverend Wayne Henderson. And he's out of Florida, is that Tampa, Florida? I think he's out of your area, around your area, Steve. He's Here up in, in North Florida. Carolina. North Carolina. He's yeah, the North guest Carolina. for tomorrow on uh, Facing Your Fears. 
And the topic tomorrow will be addiction. Uh, you know, as we know, there's many addictions that are people are addicted to. Yeah. But I would think, and in, 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 in I didn't know until he sent me his uh, topic, you know, the paragraph detailing his topic for tomorrow, that what he'll be talking about is how you are, people are so addicted to uh, social media. Uh -huh. And we... And I think it's a very interesting topic for tomorrow, especially for our young children, because look mm -hmm. like they go a minute a day without being on their cell phones or connecting to social media. So I'm excited about tomorrow, yeah. and uh, and I'm not going to go into this topic because that's <laughs> facing tomorrow. Well, but I do that the parents call in because he's going to be giving uh, a lot of edu educating a lot on. Uh, the addictions that people have in reference to social media. And I'm more than sure he's going to be talking about other addictions as well. Uh, so it's going to be an interesting show. And uh, my, myself, and I know my co-host, she's always excited about our <laughs> Yeah. And we just, you know, waiting for tomorrow to bring in Reverend uh, Wynn Henderson. Yeah, yeah, he's really, he is really great. Um, I, I'd like to for you to address uh, this thought that I have here. Um, what you know? What would you tell a person that might be in an abusive uh, relationship? And and we always seem to hear, and and I don't know that it's true, but the fact is, is that you hear that. Well, you keep on going back, and I know even for myself, I was in a like more like a mentally abusive situation. And you just keep on going back to it. What would you tell someone that's in a, an abusive relationship to do? What what advice would you give them? Well, uh, Steve, uh, it's like seven times that an abusive uh, person is being abused. It takes them at least seven times, uh, leaving and going back, leaving and going back to finally uh, make up in their minds that this is, you know, this is enough. But what I want to stress right here is what, why it takes so long and why, and the question that you just asked me, why do they keep going back? Well, a lot of a domestic violence victim have, they, they feel that there's no way that they can support themselves or, and they Abuser have made them felt like it's nothing they can do without them. You know, they make mm -hmm. sure that they don't get educated or they make them feel that, look, I'm the only hope. And then some of them, uh, as far as they uh, 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 relatives and friends, when they make sure you have no contact with these people, so mm -hmm. you're not connecting to no one. So that's fear there, you know, that so they, they stay there because they feel that there's no way out. You know, there's no where they can go. And then if they go, the the victim or uh, their uh, abuser tell them, look, I'm going to find you. And when I find you, I'm going to kill you. Now, don't take that lightly because they mean, some of them mean just what they say. Mm -hmm. If you leave me, I will kill you. And then some of them threaten to kill the whole family. Like my, uh, the person that shot me, he took his own life. So, don't, so they, they don't care. You know, they, they, it's a, it's a sickness. Yeah. And it's something that they help with. My advice to someone out there that's going through a domestic violence uh, environment is to, get help as soon as you can because there is help out there now you know someone will listen to you but you've got to make the first step you got to come from behind the mask put on courage pray and know that god is with you and no one else is there god yeah, put is put on the armor of god correct such as myself pastor doris smith yourself steve and a lot of other that's standing in the gap for domestic violence victims our prayers and we and we have all type of information that can help you and and put you in the right 
mm -hmm. uh, 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 lead you to the right people that can help you. And I only want you to leave. Don't be afraid because they have somewhere for you to stay. They even take care of your children. There's edu they have educational. You can educate yourself by going back to school if you don't have a high school education or a college background. They uh, prepare you by uh, letting you, you know, be able to go back to pursue your career. And then, uh, then you, a lot of uh, uh, times I've had guests on my show to where they were already had a career. Now drugs plays a big part in domestic violence. That's one of the handicap that keep the, uh, the victim uh, staying with their abuser. Now, well, it, I think it's about helping a person build up their emotional health, would it not be? Well, if they're immune, if they're uh, uh, addicted to drugs, right? Uh, then, then they find out. Then they become abusive. Their partner become abusing them because they make them go out and get money for them to buy the drugs for their habit. Mm -hmm. So they feel like this. This here, you know, I need they need it and the abuser need it as well. So when they get right. back, you know, it's, 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 it's just abuse after abuse. And then some some cases they wind up being prostitutes, you know, for not for themselves, but as well as for the abuser. So and then, you know, then things happen from in, inside the household. <laughs> Everybody like the pandemic is going on now. Everybody all stressed out and you know and and and, and uh, financial wise and stuff like that. And that brings in tension and stress. So they they feel that you know the only person I have to listen to me that they think that said that they love me is the one that's abusing them. When in fact that that, that you know now also we have to keep in mind that they're men. Uh, uh, just as much victim as women, you know, and then young girls and young boys in college and high school, they start this food recipe, calling out, calling out your name. Don't, you know, when it, when it first happened, get on the body there. You know, leave, don't look back. And once you get in, in, in years and years of abuse, it's just that, you know, they're afraid, they're afraid. But we have to keep educating them and keep talking to them, setting yeah. the gap, and leading them. And through Let's one of these, go to this. I, I I would just want to go to this comment because I think it's important. From Lori, mm -hmm. Whitney. thank you for taking time to to put this mm -hmm. comment in there, Lori. Uh, but they think that they can fix it, but nothing. It's nothing but shattered glass. Let it go. Yep, it's hard to leave abuse uh, when they're living with a monster, and. Yeah. And I kind of know that feeling, but in a different, you know, well, I mean, it was mental abuse for me, but um, it's hard but because Steve, the person, is, right? You but know, I'm, but let me say, I'm so proud of you too, because you, uh, you always say that you want to try and help the abuser too, because they need help as well. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. right? See, a lot, a lot of times abuse starts, we don't know where it started from. Maybe the abuser came from an abusive a family. And then the only way they know how to show love is the way that their father, their mother showed love by abusing the one whom they said they love. But make no mistake, you know, God is not the author of no confusion. If there's fighting, cussing, and arguing, and fighting in house, God is nowhere in that relationship. And I know that I'm not going to say that 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 that, uh, that is easy because it's not going to be easy. Mm -hmm. But at least have the courage. To have the courage that enough is enough. I'm not gonna take it anymore. Why you don't have your life? You know, and, and there are people gonna protect you out there. You don't have to be afraid of all uh, they have they house you and then all yeah. of this information is confidential. So there's so much to domestic violence until uh Steve, there's no way we can have a domestic I give domestic violence classes, you know, I teach domestic violence. And there's I want so to put this up too. I've got a national domestic violence hotline here that you can call if you're in a situation, folks. Call this number, reach out for help. That takes a lot of strength just to do that, right? Is to yeah. just re reach out and ask for help. Uh, we've got uh, I've got as well uh, the ticker now running uh, because I know that 
people can be in this situation and they might want to either, like you said, you know, your, mm -hmm. your abuser took his life uh, or someone feels so ho horrible about their situation, they might want to take their life too. And so what well, we want well, them to know. I think, I think it's fear. Once they mm -hmm. went so far, then they, they know that there's consequences behind that. You know, so uh, it's not, you know, and then one might would think, well, how could they be afraid of, of, of the police when they actually know that they can go to jail for domestic violence? Well, that's the that's the problem. They're cowards. Right. They're cowards. <laughs> and then uh, uh, for them, for, and so they're afraid now, once the, you call the law, then the, the lady or the man that's the uh, a victim, they let them sweet talk them back and come back. They drop charges. Now I'm so happy the law have changed to where you can't drop the charges and the state take it over. And that's one of the good yeah. things about domestic violence because you find yourself in love or thinking you're in love with your abuse and you go down there and you drop the charges and the same night, probably a couple of hours after you get home, there you is being abused again. So that's basically, I'm going to let uh, uh, co-host Pastor Doris Smith yeah. On Facebook, Facebook, maybe she have some comments on domestic violence. Absolutely, um, share with I just, us. I just like to chime in as um, evangelist yeah. sharing on domestic violence. One of the main things that we have to really remember when it comes to domestic violence is that it is a crime. Crime is against the law. So to, to cushion and to embrace domestic violence um, for any reason as is okay, is not okay, it's a crime. A lot of people suffer in silence. Why do they suffer in silence? They suffer in silence out of fear. They suffer in silence because many of them cannot provide the financial means that they are accustomed to without the abuser. So they go along and what happens is that many a times you begin to abuse your own self because now you're saying it's okay. I did something. I made him do this because you're trying to keep your surface level to stay there when it's consistently erupting. So many a times it's not just being abused by the abuser. It's becoming an abuser of your yourself really a lot of times unbeknownst to you because you're just trying to do what's necessary to keep a door open for you to keep finances to keep a place to stay and many times women struggle with that even with their children if i go what about my kids what about so you become abused in other areas not just physically now you're mentally abused you're you're, you're tormented in your thoughts you have no clarity so this domestic violence we must remember it is a crime. However, to remove your hand, and I'll use this synopsis from the lion's mouth, you have to be very cautious. The lions are not always male. And they're not always female. You have some in every category. You have to be very cautious. You can't just run up and, oh, I'm leaving you. I'm done with you. The abuser needs to operate in power. The very second the abuser feels that his power is diminishing or he or she is losing that power, then they strike out again. So you have to use a lot of wisdom even getting out of those uh, very, very critical situations because eventually all it leads to is someone get hurt or someone get killed. And many times the children are still left either without a mother or a father or both. And sadly, I'll believe this, a lot of times they become so engulfed with a hunger and a thirst to have power. So they don't only go to kill the spouse, they'll take themselves selfishly and the innocent children. So this has to be a very cautious process, not something you can just you know, just, just blast it out. You have to use wisdom and you have to be careful and get help. Yes. Get that's, help. You I, must I, get help. Let, let me, let me. Help me. For help, folks. That's what we're trying to say for sure. I put up the, uh, a new life referral center that actually is 
a part of an outreach for the LWN Live with Nature Foundation, where we have resources to be able to help you get help. Okay. Uh, so feel free to call that 800 number and, uh, you know, let, uh, let us help you help yourself. We'll do the best that we possibly can. Now, we know that because of COVID, boy, it's caused a lot of issues for people. I mean, domestic violence is up. Uh, people are checking into mental health crisis centers. That's up. Addictions are up. And so we want, uh, I know that the three of us are all here to let the viewers know that we love you and that we care about you and that we want you to get help and we want you to have the best possible life you can have. And so that's another reason why we're here tonight. It's just let you know that we care. Uh, and if we can help you, we've got numbers. Steve, may I clear this up? Uh, yes. You know, it's, it's uh, the abuse the victim okay it's it's not that you know the victim the per the uh the abuser put down on them all day and all night but it's not so much as they're making excuses why they're not leaving it's that they are afraid to leave they don't know how to leave they have been in incarcerated in this relationship for so very long until remember i said in the beginning that they have no friends and relatives people that when they go to a family function you'll be surprised they don't even know that they're going through that now also right. that they blame themselves they they said well uh those of you who saw i can tina turn on what love has to do with it, what tina said I'm the cause right. of I have to be more careful. He works so all the time. He's trying to make excuses. They become uh, uh, in their own mind. They have actually put this in their own mind that mm -hmm. they are the one that's causing the abuse to abuse them when in fact they're not. That's right. You see, it's just like being addicted. To something your mind tells you and what is in their mind and then they feel that i love them now what would they know that when they're beating on them or they're going through i can imagine they saying how much in their mind how much they hate them but after the abuse is over and the fighting is over they go they bring them in the home to say i'm sorry you know why do you keep making me do this you know you called me doing this when in fact that they are not the main thing is getting courage you know making up in your mind that you have had enough and you're not going to be chained and bound anymore that you can stand up and you can come from behind the mask tell your family your friend your pastor talk to somebody and don't go back you know plan it's not something you can just jump up and it must be carefully planned. Careful. Plan, plan when you're going to leave. Have your children ready. Know where you're going. Know who you're going to contact. And then make your move. That will be safe for you to do it. But just to jump up and do it without a plan. Mm -hmm. Because you don't know what you're doing, first of all. And you don't know who you're talking to. No, you just can't talk to anybody about you getting ready to leave. You want to plan. So, there are ways and there are people out there that mm -hmm. social workers and 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 uh, a hotline that you can call. And when you call that hotline, they are going to uh, connect you with somebody immediately. That's that you're going to get help. Okay. That's good advice. It's really good advice. Now, what I'd like to do is go to uh, Pastor Doris, and and Pastor Doris, you've written uh, some books. You're you're a published author. Uh, maybe yes. you can tell us about those books and then we'll go to uh, Evangelist Norma because she's also written some books and it's all about this. And those books are self-help books, aren't they, as well? Um, I'd just like to share with you, Steve, this is one of the books that I'm a collaborative author of, and that is The Voices of Hope. This book is inspiring untold stories for caregivers. In addition to all the many things that I do do, I am a caregiver for my husband, 
of 36 years, that's soon going to be another year. So that lets us know we're getting pretty young. Okay. Um, the, <laughs> the other book <laughs> that I have um, had the opportunity and been blessed to be a part of with a great visionary, Dr. Renee Sunday, is Grateful Every Day. Steve, I must say I am grateful, not just one day, but I am truly grateful every day of my life. I'm so grateful. And I want to share the magazine. I've been fortunate enough to be on the cover of the Good Deeds magazine, which you is do. also a part of Amazon. Uh, you can get this particular magazine on Amazon again with the amazing, awesome visionary, Dr. Renee Sunday. Um, I, I, I am just, I'm so inspired to just keep on pouring. Once I began to write, I want to write, and that's what authors do. We write and write and keep writing. So right now, I'm looking forward to the opportunity to writing another book and putting together another magazine that will also become a Facebook group, uh, along with um, uh, building, in addition to the uh, prayer line, putting that a level up to possibly even to a show. So we are just growing and um, along with Evangelist Chapman, I, I have my heads into quite a few things, but I must say I enjoy them because every smile that I see that when, it when they first came was a frown. Every smile, every I can do it, every I know now, every yes I can, it drives me, it energizes me uh, to, to press in and to press on. Regardless to life changes, we're going to have changes in life. Life changes are ongoing. We can't stop them. We can't change them. There's nothing we could do about them. We can choose to flow and to obtain our destiny and make the things that we desire in the midst of that change or we can regress and get stuck in time because we don't have the authority when it comes to that which is time only God has that only he can redeem it so it's valuable that's what our most valuable commodity is time. So not wasting it, but pouring into the world through books and pouring into the world through love, pouring into the world regardless of what the color of their skin is. My blood is red and so is my brother Steve and so is my sister uh, uh, Evangelist Chapman. So love. It's supposed to be universal. Wherever you can pour it in, pour it in. It doesn't matter how much hate come up. After a while, love will suppress it. Because hate is not strong enough to overthrow love. I don't care which way it goes. So let us love one another. And these are the gifts that I pray that will impact the lives of people to help them that the foundation you're talking about steve that yes i can was a vision that the lord gave me and i i i i help people with that in the form of allowing them to know that fear does not belong to them fear is not yours you've embraced it but it's not yours and it's not yours because god did not give it to you so to take on something that's not yours, listen, release it, let it go. There is a giant inside of you. So let's build a foundation so the giant can soar. Let's build a foundation so the giant can reign. Not just reigning so that he or she could be a giant, but reigning so that I have the ability, the knowledge, the finances, the, 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 the skills to pour back unselfishly into a world. To anyone who say, yes, I can. Yes, I will. It's going to cost you. But it's the best price you'll ever pay. It's all worth it. It is all worth it. Well, we're all all worth it. And I can't remember whether it was yourself or, or evangelist uh, Norma that said, we all have these seeds of greatness. You know, and yes. it tells us this in the Bible yes, that we have these seeds of greatness that we just need sure. to nurture them. Yes. Because we all count, you know, yes. um, things happen. Oh, yes. But, yeah, we, we can and, be survivors, right? Because mm -hmm. he's equipped us. He's given us everything necessary to survive. 
He's given us himself. And there's none greater than him. Everything, when when you think for a moment, Steve, and pause for a moment, and you say, you know, what is it that I need? What is it that I desire? It's in the Lord. He said, just look to me. Look to the hill. Everything you need flowing down from the hill, all I need you to do is just keep looking up because everything else is flowing down. And, and, and we're so grateful because you asked me about life in the abundance. That life in the abundance is, 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 is letting us know that the Lord desires for us to have the best. It's okay to have the houses, the cars, the monies, the, the finer things of life. Just don't let it have you to the point of where you think it's okay to nose up and to mistreat people. But have it humbly because the more you have in humility, in love, in, in authenticity, the more you're able to pour out and make a positive impact in the lives of others. People need to be loved. People need to be forgiven. Given. Stop holding things against people. Whatever they did, they did. Letting go, some people think it's for them, but letting go is for you. It doesn't benefit the one who have harmed me or hurt me because I hold on to it. Because 99 times the one, they have long forgot about it. So the only one hanging on to it is me. So I say, let it go. And, and, and this life in the abundance is what I have had that vision to become the CEO of this corporation and process. And, and I'm just looking forward to it blooming and flourishing and being another level of blessings that I'll be able to put in the world and help others. It's all about helping them realize that you're operating out of, if you're restricted, if you're limited, uh, uh, listen, those limits are placed on you by yourself because we serve a no limit God and we shouldn't place no limits on him. And we shouldn't place no limits on ourselves because through him we can do all things but we gotta go through him we can't go around him or, 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 or jump over we gotta go through him and he'll sustain it he'll keep it so i just love what the lord has allowed me to do uh with my own vision and also connecting with this amazing awesome woman evangelist norma chapman mm -hmm. But facing your fears. Also with you, uh, Mr. Steve Smith, this evening, we all have a chance to interchange and work together in facing your fears. And tonight, Steve, I'm so humbly grateful that you have allowed us to come on your show. And I look forward to one to you both having a chance to come and speak on the Power Hour line of inspiration, where we rise simply just to bow to the King. Thank you, Steve. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you very much. Evangelist Norma. You're yes. enough. You've written your book okay, well, was, um, almost up here. What faith can do. Yeah, it's almost up here. But uh, I'm the author of the book, What Faith Can Do. I'm writing three more as we speak. One is an advisory book, and that's moving. Still not going anywhere. And that should be out on, should be alive soon. That's an advisory book about how we move every day of our lives to and fro. But mainly we move in our mind and we don't put things into action. We just think about it and, and some of us make moves every day, going to work, coming back home, the same old, same old. But this book is about making a positive move and uh, moving in, in a direction where you can benefit from it. Even if and in, in one of the chapters I talk about, even if it causes you to have to move out of town and go into another state or another city. If New Orleans or Tampa or Miami is not working for you and you have, a, 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 you be blessed to be able to go somewhere else, but make sure it's a positive move. And make sure you're not in the same old, same old when you move, that you're going in a productive and a more, uh, you know, uh, uh, straight direction and where you can benefit from it and do some things and help people, especially community services and stuff like that. I'm also writing What Faith Has Done for Others. That's part two of the book, What Faith Can Do. That's already a lot, but that be coming out soon as well. And in this book here, I'm giving people opportunity to share their stories. Like God blessed me for miracle to live. God has blessed someone else. And then what faith has, through their faith, what God had, you know, done for them in their life. And in this book, I'm giving a two for them to share 
the beginning of the uh, chapter will be their picture. And then the third book is a, a fictional book. It's uh, The Unexpected Fear. I have a girlfriend that lives in Hazelhurst. I started writing this book in 209, right after uh, What Faith Can Do had came alive. And, and it's a story about Dolly and Steve. And it's the uh, uh, fictional, uh, uh, The Unexpected Fear. And it was taking me so long to get it on the market. I was trying to find an exciting ending to it. And God just gave me an ending to the book. <laughs> About what a month ago, so I began to write the ending to it. Hopefully, it more soon. But what that can do is on the mark, and it tells you the back of this book. It, it, it says this, this story is a true, profound message of life, love, and the determination of one woman's strength and courage to overcome. Norma Denise Chapman tells how she survived being shot several times and how she was in a coma for 40 days. It was 18 years since the tragic had happened when I started writing What Faith Can Do, but I never forgot what I wanted to write in that book. And my little daughter, my baby daughter, had gotten rid had messed with the computer and lost all of my manuscript. But after Katrina, and I'm also talking about how I survived the ordeal and the tragic of overcoming the aftermath of Hurricane Katrina with the script of my faith and love that I have obtained through Christ Jesus. And in this book, there's pictures that I'm sharing, and I'm just telling the story about me, the good, the bad, and the ugly. Because no one, God knows you, but no one knows you like yourself and God. And, and in order to help somebody, you must tell them how, if you haven't been through the storm, you certainly cannot tell someone how they can come out of the storm. Steve, you know that. You know, you was a deep alcohol. You have to yeah. go tell somebody alcohol if you never had been yeah. an alcoholic. <laughs> That's it. I was a real alcoholic at one point. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> More than that, just doing drugs too, but you know, I overcame it. It is about overcoming obstacles. It, it's about, you know, breaking through those barriers. Uh, you know, and those challenges, <laughs> yeah, they provide opportunity. Even in the worst situations, they can provide opportunity. It just depends on a perspective. Now, we're just about out of time, so I'd like to give uh, you just a couple more minutes here if you want, Evangelist Norma, just to your final closing thoughts here, and then we'll let uh, Pastor Doris uh, speak as well. And then I want everybody to stay tuned, and we'll acknowledge uh, Total Coatings, our sponsor as well, and uh, close the show out. Uh, and I'll have some final thoughts in just a moment for everybody. Thank you. Well, I want to leave with the um, viewers on today and the listeners on today. My prayer is that God will heal our land and that uh, he will bless the president, Biden, and his cabinet and administration. Administrate, um, administration is going on up there now and the hate that God would, 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 would step in and, uh, and uh, uh, you know, it, 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 and people come together and love one another because it's all about love. And uh, and so much is going on with illness, people sick from, from uh, the corona, COVID-19, they're lying on ventilators and some is at home with their uh, elderly uh, family that's sick with corona and 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 and, and, and they you know it, i just want to encourage you to just uh keep god in your life and there's nothing too big for god to do and he will you know but first of all we must seek god's face we must seek god's face we must learn how to go and pray and pray from our hearts and anything that you ask God for, he promises in his word that he will never leave us nor desert us. And you know, Steve, I'm one that like to just stand in the gap for people that don't know the Lord. Because it's about building up the kingdom of God. It's not about me. It's not about facing well, your can, fears. You can get to know the Lord a little bit better by tuning into any one of these broadcasts. So for God. And once they, once they find God, I don't care what situation you're in. I don't care what obstacles are standing in your way. Once you become and have a relationship with God, whatever you need, God is going to do the rest. You just make sure that you say, Lord, God, my path. And you say, don't waver away from the path that he put you on because he's not going to waver away from you. And just be steadfast, unmovable, always abiding in the works of the Lord. 
and we all shall see a big change in this world. God bless you. Yes, thank you, thank you, thank you. And Pastor Doris. And just thought. quickly, um, I just want to say quickly that I, I am grateful for the opportunity to come on and share. I am on yes. Facebook under Doris Smith. I would love for you all to uh, send me a friend request so that you'd be able to connect in on some of the early morning prayer lines, the Power Hour line, where we start every Tuesday morning and every Thursday morning. Um, I know our time, I'm cognizant of the time, so I'm going to turn it back over to Steve. We only have a couple minutes left. Yeah. We're just about out of time. So I want to thank uh, both yourself, uh, Pastor Doris Smith, as well as evangelist Norman Chapman. Thank you so very much. I am just truly blessed to be able to be friends with you, to learn, yes. to have the opportunity to grow, and for you to share your wisdom with our viewers this evening. Thank you so very, very much. We'll look forward to your show tomorrow, Facing Your Fears at 4.30 Central. Join in for that. Uh, we certainly want to have you join that uh, broadcast. Uh, there's the uh, somewhere here is the phone number right here yes. we want to thank everybody for taking time to come and join us uh be back with us on a friday 7 p.m eastern standard time or no eastern daylight savings time uh and we have reverend calvin w woods he is uh, a reverend obviously a pastor a super guy making a super positive impact he's got a new album out it's going to be great please do join us for that as well tell your friends about it we'll be putting out a post on facebook share that with your friends and in the meantime i want everybody to know that uh you are important we care about you and if there's anything yes. that we can do to help please just reach out we're here for you thank you for joining us this evening and we'll look forward to seeing you back around again soon thank you so very much everybody thank you for having us please you have a blessed night. We let our bathtub go too long. It had rust in it. It had deep pitting in it. There were chips. I quite frankly thought it was unrepairable. Total Coatings is a family owned and operated bathtub and shower refinishing company. We've been around since 2006, but we use a exclusive non-toxic porcelain coating that was developed over 60 years ago by a franchise in California. So the product is very well established. We refinish bathtubs, showers, wall tile, uh, countertops, and even sinks. Customers want to know what makes our product different, and that's, of course, the exclusive non-toxic porcelain. We also don't acid etch the surface, so you don't have to leave your home because of noxious fumes. I was completely and utterly shocked. It looked like a brand new bathtub. I would recommend total coatings to anybody.